Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to what kids eat for lunch at school in other countries from JJ McCullough. And yeah, I mean, I've always been fascinated by this kind of stuff because it's just fun to compare what people from different countries have to what I had. When I was in school, I would have, in primary school, when I was young, it was good. It was hot meals. It was just nice. But then when I got to high school, it was just like stuff like pizza or you can get like baguettes chips every friday like just hot i don't know like sausage rolls stuff like that pretty much bakery sort of stuff it was never anything that good and there was never really meals you just get like bites like that like again pizza i guess it is kind of a meal but it wasn't like that you know but and then like crisps and stuff and all those kinds of things but you know what my high school food the, the lunches weren't great in primary school they were good when i was young but when I got older, they were not great. And I mean, yeah, but we're going to see what it's like around the world. It's probably similar in some places, but in other places, it's probably a lot better. But yeah, let's see what it's like. And yeah, hopefully you're going to enjoy. Links are in the description to my Patreon if you want to see some more of my reactions. But let's just check this out. Hello, friends. It is me, your old pal, JJ. And today we are going to talk about lunches, specifically the lunches of children. As is so often the case with this channel. Oh, children. Oh, so this is better than this is what I can compare to. Oh, I thought it was just school. I didn't realize I, I read it, but I didn't really comprehend. Channel, I got the idea for this video from a book for babies entitled What's Inside My Lunchbox by Hannah Elliott. And I thought I could probably hash this into 10 minutes worth of content. I like to talk about culture a lot on this channel and food is one of the most important symbols of any country's culture. But a lot of countries also tend to present the world with a very dishonest picture of their food culture. They're all like, oh yes, this is the traditional food of my people. <laughs> no. The most honest way to get an accurate picture of a country's food culture is to look at the sort of lame meals that they slap together when no foreigners are looking. And what meals are lamer and more quickly slapped together than the homemade lunches that parents give their children to bring to school. All right, bologna and cheese. What do you got, Bart? Pack of sugar and peanut butter smeared on a plain card. These have to be made every day. They have to be made from easily available groceries and they have to be cheap because we are not made of- So it's packed lunches, not hot meals, packed lunches, okay. So I would have a sandwich, probably it would be, I had Marmite sandwiches quite a lot um jam maybe sometimes then a packet of crisps maybe a sort of fruit i don't know and then like a yogurt or something a yogurt or like a, a sort of a fruity sort of snacky sweet thing no, but not, not a fruit like sort of a gummy sweet i don't know something like that and that would pretty much be it. That was my school lunches when I was a kid. Of money here, children. Now, of course, not all children of the world eat lunch in exactly the same way. Some kids eat lunches prepared by school cafeteria workers. In some cultures, lunch is considered the most important meal of the day, so children go home to eat it with their families. Wow. And of course, in some cultures, they don't even eat lunch at all. But in this video, we are gonna look at a few countries where homemade lunches for children are what is most common. Starting with the place where I grew up, Canada. By the way, today's video brought to you by our good pals at Skillshare. So when I was a kid, our homemade lunches always comprised four things. A sandwich. Oh, I forgot a drink. I guess, yeah, just like, a, a, yeah, an orange juice drink or something. An apple, a juice box, and fruit snacks. My father was very good at making sandwiches. That's why I meant fruit snacks. I was trying to say it in a way that I couldn't explain. And would let me pick out any meat I wanted at the supermarket. So I would have salami or chicken or turkey or roast beef in my sandwiches, depending on what I felt like. He wouldn't let me have bologna though, because he considered that a low class meat and my parents were very stereotypically insecure middle class people. All of my <laughs> My school chums were jealous of my cool meat sandwiches because their parents would only buy them ham or sometimes peanut butter or peanut butter and strawberry jam. The apple was just an apple, nothing special. Some of the other kids would have bananas, but I could never really pull that off. They'd always get so mushed up in my bag. Juice boxes were also pretty standard. Just a little box of juice with this straw. I remember we would sometimes like to stab each other with the pointy end. And then there were the fruit snacks. For those who don't know, fruit snacks are basically just a kind of candy that comes in these little individually wrapped 
pouches. When I was a kid, there was tons of different competing brands, so everyone would have their own kind. I always had Super Mario Brothers 3 fruit snacks in commemoration of what was, at the time, a very modern and hip video game. But other popular brands included So Delicious. The Soda Pop Fruit Snacks. Oh, look, these are actual candies. I, when I mean fruit snacks, I mean like... Wait, yog... Yogurt... And... Um, strawberry... Um... Raisin... God damn. Snacks UK. What are they called? Um Will I find them? So it's like yogurt covered and then it's kinda like these. This isn't this wasn't the brand. I I used to love these, I'm not gonna lie, I used to absolutely love, love these. It's not the brand. But it's basically just sort of small bits of like small chunks of strawberry that's like a bit dried with yogurt around it and yeah i used to love those man when my mum used to get them i'd always just have some before <laughs> school like days before so then we'd have to get more after because it was just those snacks that i loved but Singly, soda sensation. shark bites you got to eat them before they you. Gushers, which were full of fruity slime. And these things, fruit roll-ups, which are basically oh. what you would get if you're... Kind of like these as well sometimes, but not like this one specifically. It was more like a like a roll-up into like a, a wheel. Fruit snacks had been run over by a steamroller. Man, this is triggering intense flashbacks for me. I bought this just as a prop for this video, but now I'm realizing that I actually haven't seen or held fruit roll-ups in like... 20 years, probably more than that. I know I said we weren't gonna talk about cafeteria food, but I just wanna tell you about the one day a month in which we would have hot dog day. On that day, with your parents' permission, the school would give us all a special lunch instead of a- Wait, that was a lunch? Chocolate milk? The school would give us all a special- Chocolate milk, you got this like, is it an eclair? No, what's it called? Just a chocolate thingy, I guess. You used to have these in the UK with bread, but it would be white icing instead. <laughs> it's so basic. It was like this bun, but with icing like that. To be fair, in school, you would have loved these days. I'm not going to lie. For lunch, instead of a boring old sandwich, the school would give us a tiny hot dog like this one. Instead of a juice box, we would get a carton of chocolate milk. And instead of fruit snacks, we would get one of these things. We call them <laughs> long johns. I don't know if you have them where you are. Basically just a big donut covered in chocolate. Hot dog days were the best. So based on this, you can probably draw some conclusions about Canadian food culture. We like bread, we like fruit, we like store-bought commercial nonsense, and we like sugar. But what about other parts of the world? Well, I worked briefly as an English teacher in Japan, and that gave me a little oh, window damn. into what the Japanese school children eat. Over there, the kids would bring these little plastic boxes to school, mostly filled with rice, often with a single pickled sour plum right in the middle to give the rice some flavor. I remember I once had a student who confidently told me that this is what the Japanese flag was supposed to represent, rice with a pickled plum in the middle. The other half of the box would be filled with some sort of vegetable medley, usually like broccoli and carrots. So they actually ate pretty healthy. And this would be like packed lunches, pretty much. Wow. Some tomato and corn. They'd often have tamago yaki too, which is this kind of scrambled egg cooked with sugar that Japanese children really like. If you've ever had tamago sushi, it's that thing. The other cliched thing would be a boiled hot dog wiener sliced up to look like an octopus. I'm serious. For some reason, this was a real <laughs> hot item in the Japanese lunchbox scene. I would often ask people <laughs> why this was a thing, and they would often say, Hmm, maybe to make lunch fun for the children? That is how Japanese people always answer questions, by the way. It is always, hmm, maybe, you know, because they don't like declarative statements. Making lunches fun for the children is one of the great hobbies of bored Japanese housewives, in fact. If you Google Japanese lunchboxes, you will see all sorts of incredibly- Bro, I mean, there's no way people are having these lunches in, like, consistently, bro. <laughs> over the top as hell no way no someone's making this for their kid i mean obviously that would be cool but they've got lives too the creative styles of arranging rice wieners <laughs> and veggies in a vain attempt to impress spoiled brat children 
who in my experience just throw most of it in the garbage anyway. Now in India, meanwhile, their children tend to eat, and get ready for a big shocker here, Indian food. Some of the stereotypical Indian lunch foods we might recognize, like curry and rice, or a piece of roti or dosa bread, or a couple pakoras or samosas. But some of the other cliched foods are things you might have not heard of before, like idli, which is this kind of blob thing made of rice and lentils served with chutney, or this stuff called umpa, which is this sort of rice porridge everyone apparently hates. Aww. Now, if you are like me, you are probably wondering how the Indian children possibly bring all of this complicated food to school. Where I come from, we would just take everything and cram it into one of these cheap plastic Safeway bags. That's what I used to do. And call it a day. But you can't do that if you're having some big fancy pan. I didn't even have a lunchbox. I literally did that. I probably had lunch boxes at certain points, but I did just most of them have just a plastic bag. It's meal with all this rice and sauce. Apparently, the answer is to get one of these things, which is this big multi-tier stainless steel contraption called a tiffin tin, which you then hollerooned in an even bigger wicker basket. So I guess that's a fair trade-off for getting to eat Indian food for lunch every day, which yeah. frankly sounds kind of awesome. When yeah. it comes to fruits, Indian children apparently love their mangoes. I love mango. Especially fruity brand mango juice, which the Indian children apparently go nuts for, at least if this commercial is anything to go by. <laughs> If I was a kid and I saw this advert, I would want this drink. But of course, India is a gigantic country with many cultural deviations within it. If you are an Indian watching this, please let me know what is a stereotypical lunch thing from your particular region. Now, Europeans make lunches for their children, which are not too different from the lunches we have here in North America, which yeah. is to say very sandwich-centric. But of course, being Europeans, their sandwiches are all weird and different. In Germany, for instance, their kids often eat sandwiches made from this weird is that rye bread grainy bread this is the really healthy bread isn't it um, my parents went through a stage when they were still together of like making this bread and it was terrible known as volcorn brute it's like a, i swear it's, it looks the same it's a really healthy bread instead of the nice fluffy white bread like we have here and instead of jam or peanut butter they might have a sandwich made of cheese or liver worst. Unless we start to feel too insecure about those health conscious euros, I will note that a lot of European parents also give their kids Nutella what? sandwiches, which I, I think I had that a couple times to be fair. I think most American parents would probably I think I had that a couple times. Now they were probably the best day, I'm not gonna lie. They draw the line at. But of course, when it comes to sandwiches, no one is as weird as the Brits. <laughs> Over there they give their <laughs> their kids all sorts of crazy stuff like cucumber sandwiches or crisp sandwich crisp sandwich it i mean people eat crisp sandwiches don't get me wrong but for like did i ever have a crisp sandwich i don't think i did i think if we went on like a school trip away i probably would have done it because i would have just felt fancy or something i don't know that fancy for me <laughs> i love how the brits are just getting laughed at even in the flipping food for lunch or whatever cheers or french fry sandwiches or sandwiches with this weird ah. meat with a bear. <laughs> oh, I've actually never had those, but I definitely saw people who had those had those bits of ham. This face on it. British kids also like drinking Ribena, which is a black yeah. currant soda so sugary, a single small bottle is the equivalent of 13 Oreos. By the way, fun fact, wow. do you know why we- I never had a Ribena in school though. It would be smaller drinks. My bean would probably be in like high school and stuff. In North America, have no clue what a black current even is. It is because the species is a carrier of a particular kind of invasive fungus that poses a danger to our beloved pine trees. So you oh, haven't wow. been legally allowed to grow them here for many years, and as a result, they are this good. There's a good flavor. This kind of mysterious exotic thing. Though it doesn't sound like our children's teeth are missing much. Now, obviously, I am only beginning to scratch the surface of lunches of the world. This is one of those topics that is quite hard to research since people generally do not write informative articles about what children of the world eat for lunch, only hectoring articles about what they should be eating for lunch. Unhealthy little fatties. But this is where you come in. Help me out by posting in the comments what sort of stereotypical things parents make for their children's lunches in your country. Particularly, think about the sort of things that kids in your country might consider relatively ordinary, but would be very fun and exotic to us in 
other parts of the world, I will make a sequel video of- In Gruden, my kids always get two number nines, a number nine large, a number number seven, a number six with extra dip, two number 45s, one with cheat. What? Is that, is that like a McDonald's joke or something? <laughs> The UK one is pretty accurate. When I was in primary school in the, in the 90s, my typical lunchbox would contain a sandwich with cheese or some form of processed meat, yep. A packet of crisps, yep. And either a car carton of juice or a small bottle of fizzy drink. Fizzy drink in school? I never had fizzy drink in school. Panda Pop was pr the preferred brand at the time. And maybe some, maybe a small yogurt, yep. Or if it, it would even be a yogurt, which would get warm through the day. So what my mum used to do is freeze. Do you have fruits in the US? It's like this long packaging it's like a long sort of stick packaging and they're typically just like yogurt but she would freeze them so then when it got to the time for having them for school lunch which would be like four or five hours into the day four hours into the day it would still be cold pretty much which is always quite cool um if we didn't like our sandwich filling then we would take the meat out and insert the crisps yeah to be fair i, I, I can't remember but i probably did do that in Mexico, in my experience, the most common thing kids would have for lunch are, t are tortas, which are not cakes, as Google Translate might tell you. They are basically sandwiches, but made with bolillo, a kind of bread roll instead of sliced bread. I would usually get mine filled with refried beans, with chorizo or eggs scrambled together with ham or some other sort of meat. Funnily enough, the this, this sold, this sold those. The sold, I guess he means they sold those same octopus wieners called, I can't say it, Sal Chipulpos at the school's cafeteria, but they'd pan fry them so their legs would stay open. Um, quick note, in South India, we have a dish called sambar, which is essentially veg, veg curry and lots of pulses. The hell is a pulse? The kids go nuts for it as seen in the commercial. We immediately get a beer commercial. <laughs> Yeah, your phone's being watched, man. But as a Brit, the things you mentioned do exist, but most lunches are very similar to Canada, yeah. A meat sandwich, a piece of fruit, and usually a packet of crisps or sweets. Yeah, that's it. I never used to have sweets, so it was like the ones that I showed. Like, it is kind of a sweet. It's a cheat sweet, pretty much. But, um, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this reaction, and let me know what you had in school when you were younger, because it's always just fun to look back at, basically, what what it was like when you were younger and how, how different, different it's become. Because I guess, for some of you, you probably watched this, you went to school was in like the 70s and 80s when you were in primary school when you were a kid so the lunches could have been way different back then as well but yeah let me know what you had because that's just a fascinating little topic but that's that and until next time i like, subscribe peace